Ashman phenomenon is an aberrant conduction which occurs in atrial fibrillation. You can see that uh, no P waves have been shown in this case. Very fine fibrillary waves may be considered, but this is a diagram. This is not an actual electrocardiogram. And when there is a long cycle in atrial fibrillation, we know that uh, the cycle lengths can vary significantly, at least 50% from maximum to minimum. And uh, when there is a long cycle, which is followed by a short cycle, aberrancy can occur. That's because recovery of right bundle branch conduction is delayed compared to left bundle branch. We usually say that right bundle is a bit lazy and that's why most of the aberrancies are right bundle branch type of aberrancies. This is a representation of lead V1. In V1 you can see that instead of the R deepest pattern an R S R prime pattern has occurred due to aberrancy. The importance of this Ashman phenomenon is that this may be mistaken for a ventricular ectopic beat. In atrial fibrillation, when there is a ventricular ectopic beat, especially if the person is on digoxin, it is quite significant. Digoxin is used for rate control in atrial fibrillation. So, if there is a ventricular ectopy or frequent ventricular ectopy, then it's an indication to stop digoxin and possibly, if required, restarted in lower doses. But if it is Ashman phenomenon causing aberrancy, appearing like a ventricular ectopic beat, there is no need to stop digoxin. In fact, you are supposed to continue digoxin. You might think why digoxin is needed because there are other rate controlling agents. But there may be some persons who need digoxin in whom the other rate controlling agents are not suitable. Even now digoxin is being used though the use and dosage has come down remarkably so that chance of digoxin toxicity being noted is very rare. Still. If a person has been on digoxin for a long time and later develop renal failure or chronic kidney disease, there is a possibility that we may still see digoxin toxicity. After 